Well hey everyone and welcome back. In the last video we covered the three most basic types of unconformities, those being disconformities, parallel unconformities, and nonconformities. So today we're going to talk about three more types of unconformities. And with that, let's get right into it. So the first one we have is called a paraconformity. And these are interesting because there's not a clear way of seeing them. In fact, it's very easy to overlook them if you're just looking at, I don't know, um, a column of strata in the Grand Canyon, right? It can be very difficult to clearly define them. Because essentially, this is what they look like. So you've got a layer there, layer there, layer there, layer there. And we'll just label those A, B, C, and D. And you look at this and you think, well, that just looks like four layers of strata deposited on top of one another. Where's the unconformity? And it comes down pretty much entirely to this. Right. Unconformities show some sort of gap, usually. And that gap is usually marked by erosion before, you know, erosion takes place between the depositional sequence. But in this case, there's usually no erosion because they're, they usually maintain their uniform uh, horizontal booking state. But instead of there being erosion, you can usually tell um, when there's a paraconformity by just the absence of a certain layer of rock or a gap in the geologic time itself. So how you would tell this is if you were to date the rocks, so let's say D down here is uh, from 200 million years ago, C is from 190 million years ago, we'll say B is from 120 million years ago, and A is from 110 million years ago. Well, for the most part, we've got a constant pattern of just, there's a difference of 10 million years between the deposition of each of these uh, strata, except when you look at between B and C. We go from 190 to 120. Obviously, this is just an example, but in, in the real world, the numbers won't work out this nicely. But if you see a strangely large uh, gap in the geologic time, or the time between the deposition of the rocks you're looking at, then you can assume that there's something entirely missing there, and for that reason we call it an unconformity, or a paraconformity. So in this case we would say that between B and C there is a paraconformity. The layers are parallel and still look uniform and horizontal, however due to the large gap in the time between them, we can assume that, that something went on for that reason, it's an unconformity. And that's all there really is to parallel or para unconformities. Para conformities, geez. Making the name longer than it needs to be. And our next type is the buttress unconformity. That's a pretty fun name. Buttress unconformity. And buttress unconformity is what you what you have to have in order to have a buttress un unconformity is what's called predepositional topography. So what that looks like is this: if we've got just our bed. And let's say we've got a, a big lump of igneous rock, a pluton down here. Just looks something like that. Now, when the next layer of sedimentary rock is deposited, something interesting will happen. Now, in my last video when I covered nonconformities, I drew a sedimentary layer on top of an igneous layer looking something like that, right? It came up flat. Now, this won't happen in many cases because, um, Obviously, there aren't walls here, and unless you get a large buildup, um, the sedimentary 
rock will never end up this uniform. Um, so in many cases, instead of looking like this, we'll have the buttress unconformity, which is marked by basically uh, an odd shape or um, certain bumps or truncations in the in the layer overlying igneous rock. So we'll make that look more igneous-like. And then this is our sedimentary rock that was deposited on top of it. And by the law of original horizontality, we know that something must have happened to this. So because of that, we know, well, there was no folding that occurred. Therefore, it, it must have been this predepositional topography down here, this um, igneous rock that caused it to have that weird shape. And then as we continue to deposit layers on top of it, you know, they'll get more and more, they'll get closer to uh, being horizontal. Maybe the next couple of layers up we'll get to something flat again. But, yeah, basically the buttress unconformity, you've got something down here that is uh, not a, horiz a perfectly flat horizontal shape. Sedimentary rock gets deposited on top of it, as shown here. And then it kind of it kind of follows its shape. The surface of set of the sedimentary rock is um, edited due to the presence of that igneous rock, and that's how you tell if there's buttress unconformity. If certain sedimentary rock is not behaving the way it should be, and there is no evidence of any folding or anything like that that could have resulted in um, deforming it. Okay, so our final one is interesting. It's, I don't want to say unimportant, because it does exist and you should know it, but um, compared to the other two, well, the first three I covered in that first video are really the big three, um, but even compared to the other two in this video, this one is, uh, you'll hear about it much less, um, but it's called a blended unconformity. And this one is interesting because, kind of similar to the paraconformity, it's difficult to tell when you actually have one, right? So let's just say we've got... We'll draw two things here. Let's say we've just got sedimentary layer, sedimentary layer, and then this one, we got a kind of funky shape, and then one more sedimentary layer. And this one, uh, maybe we've got an igneous like that, and then a sedimentary layer, a sedimentary layer, and a sedimentary layer. And I guess we'll label some of those just just because. Now you may look at these two and initially you would think, well this right here looks like some an erosional surface between layers B and A, which are both sedimentary rock and therefore you would call it a disconformity. And if you look at these two, you would say, well, there appears to be an erosional surface between C, a sedimentary layer, and I, an igneous layer. So you'd call that a nonconformity. Which, just based on my pictures, is correct. I, that, that's what I would do too. But when you look at things in the real world, and this is what makes blended unconformities interesting, they're difficult to draw um, in this sort of cross-sectional diagram. But what it looks like in the real world, a blended unconformity, is basically, well, as the name implies, two layers of rock appear to be sort of blended together by a medium in between them. And this medium is usually soils or paleosols. That's another fun word, paleosols which are also known as uh, fossil soils, or basically soil that was formed a very long time, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a very long time ago, and you won't see them today, and basically you can only find them within the, contained within um, strata of rock, usually pretty far back in the geologic time. Um, but yeah, you'll see either soils or paleosols sort of just in between these two, 
that gives them a more blended appearance than just one erosional surface and a break immediately between two layers of strata. Um, so you'll see that, or rather you won't see that on these cross-sectional diagrams, um, but in the real world it would look like, let's say, that layer B was deposited, and then you had this sort of small little layer of soil forming along it. And that gives it sort of this uneven, uneven appearance. And then layer A is deposited on top of layer B, which compresses the soil and just sort of sandwiches it in between these two layers. It's like an ice cream sandwich right there. The soil is the ice cream. So you would look at that and you would say, well, it doesn't look like a, just a disconformity because it's, it's not as clearly defined. There is no sharp break between the two layers. But there definitely is something. Because they're definitely, it, it doesn't look even. It's not just, it doesn't look like that. The soil still creates an uneven appearance. So upon closer inspection, you may find soils or paleosols uh, compressed in between the two layers, and that's when you can call it a blended unconformity. And that's all there really is to blended unconformities. And with that, I think we're done with the three, the three new types of unconformities for today. As I said, those are much less common or yeah, much less common in the real world, and you'll hear about them talked about much less. But they're important to understand um, and know that they exist. So, hopefully this was informative. Otherwise, hopefully it was good review. Hope you enjoyed the video, and you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.